In this episode, one of the more difficult VCRs to work on, a real dog's breakfast, and you'll see once we get into it, this is not a pretty machine to work on. It has about 25 circuit boards in it with all kinds of spaghetti connecting everything. You'll see when I get into it. There are real rat's nest of wires and one that was not very well liked in the service business, and you'll see why. I've got here a JVC HRS 8000 Super VHS machine with a few problems, apparently. It has a... Colors get very red and green after 30 minutes. Only one channel is working and the mechanism was loud on rewind. Well, we'll see whether we can get something like this going. Uh, these machines here, although a lot of people like to think that they were built like a tank, but they actually have a lot of mechanical problems because they were so mechanically complex, like all the old ones were. So these ones here are not my favorite machine, that's for sure. I have one, and it's not fixed. So let's load the tape. We'll, we'll first uh, see how this works. Does it fast forward and rewind okay? Because that'll give me an indication of how the idler is. Seems to have a fair bit of torque on take up. Let's try rewind. The rewind is also seems to be working okay. So let's just try playing this tape and see whether I get a picture. And I'll let this thing play for a bit and see how it looks. So far, it looks good right now. This, of course, is my test tape. Okay, on the audio board, I see some of this crappy uh, interference. Pretty sensitive to uh, AM radio signals, and there's a transmitter running here. But uh, first things first, I'm going to depower this thing. I want to uh, clear off that uh, this circuit glue because that has turned black and when it goes black like that it generally becomes conductive and can cause all kinds of weird problems especially with the component that it's covering right it's covering a little component here what is it covering anyway it's a little resistor hard to see from where i am or it's a diode anyway let's scrape this crap out of here See if that will fix one of its problems. One of the meters is is not measuring. Um, one of the meters is not registering. I have sound on both channels, but uh, one of the uh, panel meters is not responding very well. So let's just scrape this stuff out of here. That might be just that's just a jumper wire. It looks like. Yeah, that's just a jumper. That was an oops at the factory. And they just put a jumper over it, and then they put our wonderful corrosive conductive glue over top of it. And, well, that stuff causes all kinds of headaches. There's some more of these uh, double-sided tape pads. They also uh, tend to get go batting and, and create leakage under them when the rubber deteriorates so it's a good idea to pick these off as well and clean up the board try to get all of it off of the board that you can just because the adhesive underneath it over a period of time has a tendency to to uh, start to turn into a resistor it can cause problems down the road so we'll take this one off as well. I 
I mean, they put it in place to stop these parts that they just added after the fact to uh, fix a design problem or design flaw. They uh, put them in place to stop them from shorting out against anything. I'll just put a bit of black tape under the component when it's bent over just to prevent it from shorting through the board. Okay, so I got only one meter displaying audio signal. I wonder if it's a bad connection on the, in the meter board here. And we may have a connection problem onto the uh, on the meter here. Yeah, it looks like that. The left channel just came on and then it went out again. I think it's just a display problem. We'll investigate that. Now both of them are lighting up. It's got to be some connection. As I move this here, both of them start lighting up. So let me just uh, see if I can get this front panel off here. See if there's a connection underneath. The, the problem with these machines is that there are so many bloody interconnects and wires and stuff, right? Connecting everything together. Okay, the, uh, the display board is here. I'm curious as to whether maybe there's a connection where I think the audio signal comes up here on a couple of on a couple of cables. Something on here though, because when I when I moved this board to uh, remove it, the uh, second meter fl started flashing. Watch as I give this a bit of a twist. See, <laughs> as I give it, as I flex the board a bit, it's coming on. So I have a feeling it's something, something on the back of this board is not making a good connection. That's what we have to investigate for the, the audio meter. So I'm thinking something on this board um, is either the crack connection or it could be this circuit glue as well. See, there's some more these stickers on here. There's some more of this circuit glue uh, on here, but definitely. I think something on this board, I'm just going to release this connector for the front panel so that the ribbon cable doesn't get damaged. And uh, we'll take this board out, examine it, cut the zap tie. Notice I've got some paper in here. Just so that the bezel doesn't get scratched and try to keep this machine it's actually in pretty good shape so i'd like it to kind of leave in the same the same condition that it arrived if possible but i do need to look at this board i want to get this board right out of here just so i can give these connectors a a good um, thorough inspection it's, it's looking like a, a broken solder connection or something like that So I've got, it uh, looks like there's two screws that hold the board in place. Remove those and I should be able to lift the board out. So let's just try. See if we can lift the board out and unplug it. And then I can look at the board up, up close and personal. I almost wish I hadn't said yes, I would look at this because uh, I forgot how ugly these machines can be. I've got one and I'm not going to repair it just because they're ugly. They're hard to work on and they got all these circuit boards in them that are just a pain in the butt to work on. Okay, now I've got the display board 
out of here. I want to unplug it. Should be a couple plugs. Oh, maybe this doesn't unplug. This one doesn't for sure. Either does this one. Some of them are soldered right down, but anyway, I want to I want to go over this and just very closely look at these uh, these plugs and connectors with a uh, magnifying glass and see if there's anything that uh, is bad. You guys probably couldn't see what I was doing there, but anyway, I'm just unplugging one of the plugs and I'm just going to inspect all these connections here and the connectors because this is the, the display driver that drives the vacuum fluorescent display so I'm thinking what's happened just because of the way that this is how, how the, the way that this is behaving when I kind of give this whole front assembly a bit of a flex that left meter comes back on so that's telling me that there's a, a connection here maybe on the IC that's gone bad the input for that left channel because this is just an analog meter right it receives a signal and it uh, displays it as a bar graph should be noted that these type of circuit boards they fracture quite easily they're kind of a I think they're like a paper resin design other designs that use a fiberglass base are much more durable but these ones here it doesn't take much to damage them going to do this IC here. I think this is the, the level display driver. I think. I'm not sure. I don't have a manual for this yet. It's easier to find audio manuals than it is VCR manuals. They're almost impossible to find, but when this would have been made, it would have been a paper service manual. And any of the ones you're going to find online, somebody's just scanned them. And the scans that I've seen generally aren't really worth anything because they're not at high enough resolution to really see what's going on. I'll do this I see. And, uh, and the display. And then plug it back in. But just the way that this is behaving, it's... Uh, connection or a crack trace somewhere but uh, this is not a super VHS that I would be preserving myself there are many other ones that JVC made that were a better machine with fewer parts these ones had a lot of components in them and discrete components, although some people might think that that's, that's better because you can change the individual part, which is true, you can, but it doesn't make it more reliable. It actually decreases the reliability. Large-scale integration was uh, a big improvement as far as the reliability of all these devices went. discrete does not increase the serviceability because they use a lot of ICs that are still not available so when you have an electronic problem on any of these machines it's basically game over
I do believe the meter is working on both channels now. I see display. That's a good sign. Let's put this back together. Oops. Put that up. I'll pop this in. And close it down. Okay, now I can put this front panel back on. Yeah, right. Yeah, sure. Easier said than done. The wires are pretty tight. And people wondered why VCR repairs cost so much back in the early 80s and mid 80s. And they say, what? Oh, where did that come from? That came from back here somewhere. i got to figure out where that piece went. That was a shield that went over this, I believe. Yeah, that was a shield that went right in here. i gotta, I got to take, take the board out, I think, again, to, to put that in. Damn. But say, again, um, you know, people would say how, they would complain about how much it cost to to fix a VCR back in the day and they couldn't figure out why it, you know shops would charge ridiculous fees to do what they thought was simple things like cleaning the heads there that just pops in like that um, and you know changing belts and stuff they say well how come how come it's $85 to to change a belt well when you see what the old machines were built like you know, they were not built that well as far as I'm concerned they were built uh, you know they were built they weren't designed to be serviced without spending a small fortune let's put it that way it's uh, the the more modern machines even though we complain about the funais and how you got to tear the whole machine apart to change a belt well these ones weren't really any better these were probably even worse these early ones they got better for a while and then they got worse again but the, some of these really early ones like this these were a real pain to work on because they had all these interconnects all these wires connecting everything together and uh, they were a pain in the butt to work on so I'm going to put some rubber renew on the uh, idler tire here just because it's slipping a little bit Okay, that should hopefully eliminate the little bit of slippage I was getting on the rewind and fast forward. Can't rewind now. The uh, hubs are a little bit noisy. They might it might use a bit of uh, oil on on the uh, the bearings, or it could just be the bearings themselves are starting to get a bit loud. Trying to get that cut washer out. Okay, that's all. Pop that out. Yep. 
these don't really use bearings they're more like plastic hubs I put a drop like a little tiny bit of oil down onto here onto the little slip bushing there I don't want to put much on because it's not needed We'll do the same for the other supply side. See how the tape runs now. That's a little quieter. Okay, now I gotta let this thing run and just let it play. I got the sound turned off because I got music playing through on channel 12. But I let this movie play here and see if the uh, video is gonna act up as the complaint was. I said it was uh, that the, uh, the. What did he say? He said the picture was going. Uh, colors get very red and green after 30 minutes. I'm gonna let this thing play here for a while. Obviously, can't show it to you guys. This is an SP, S, uh, in SLP recording in an SVHS tape. So I'm going to let this one play here for a while and just monitor it. So this is just a movie I recorded off Laserdisc, making it about as good a quality that I could get off of a, off of an SVHS tape. So I'm seeing some white uh, specks across the screen, which looks like a grounding problem on the head drum. Under the head shield, there's this electrode, which is used to ground the actual head drum itself and sometimes what happens is the connection between this electrode and the head drum fails. I've had this thing playing now for several hours. I'm not getting the what did he say? Red and green the colors get very red and green. I haven't seen that. I have seen this this uh, uh, streaks across the screen. So we're just going to check the electrode out here. So the electrode is just a little, a little bit of carbon on the bottom here, and it makes contact with the drum. And eventually it will wear a little bit, and what we need to usually do is just put a little more tension on the spring. Just bend it down a bit so it has a little more tension, and then put the bracket back on. So one thing I've found, I've, I mean I've spent a lot of time on this machine, a lot of it testing to see if the, the pitcher will get these colored lines in it, which it hasn't, and the other complaint is the power supply feels hot, but holding my hand over the power supply after this thing running for several hours, it's not, doesn't feel any hotter than it should. It is a switching power supply, so there will be heat coming off of the, the heat sink on the uh, 
switching regulator. One thing I have noticed though is that the guides themselves are very loose. There's no resistance whatsoever. This is the movie Pump Up the Volume, but as you can see it's an EP speed and it's playing back perfectly. There's the display board. There's another board behind here, that's two. There's another board here, three. Four is here, five is underneath there. Six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 21 circuit boards on this bloody VCR. And everything's connected by this spaghetti of wires. Oh, more than that because there's a couple daughter boards too. 22, there's one there. And then there's these composite circuits that you, they've got. Count those as a circuit board if you want. There's two of them, three of them there, and there's another two of them over here. Yeah, this thing is just loaded with circuit boards. And it looks like more of that fancy glue that's here. Oh yeah, here's some more of that circuit glue that's got to get removed. It's gonna, it's going to deteriorate and cause leakage. It's a. Uh, it, I mean, I, I know people love these old machines because they think that they're old and heavy and reliable, but they're actually very unreliable because of all these different circuit boards and all these different plugs and all these connectors. And there's just so many things that can go wrong with this. Yes, the, the more modern VCRs had less in them, and the mechanisms seemed to be much more flimsy with lots of plastic and stuff, but in the end, they were actually more reliable than these ones. A lot of people now don't remember what these were like because they didn't have one of these, but back in the day, these had a lot of problems just because of their complexity. So the test point to do the alignment on this one is test point six. It's on the main board. So say not in the most common place because typically it's, it's on the preamp board, but uh, in this case, the preamp board is uh, down here. The preamp board is here, and there's a cable that connects up to where the test point is on this one. Uh, if we want to trigger it from the trigger point, it's over here. So as you can see, this is an SP tape. Now, it was recorded on my machine, a Super VHS uh, tape, years and years ago. But as you can see, the, the alignment is not quite right, so I'm just going to just tweak it slightly, and then I'll check with my, my reference tape. So there's the alignment now is pretty much flat. Check the other side, the other guide. Wasn't off by much, you know, just maybe a quarter of a turn to bring that back up. And there's that recording. Looking excellent and sounding good too. Okay, rewind the tape. Everything's looking good now. Rewind is nice and quiet. Remember how it was kind of uh, lagging before, kind of surging. Rewind is nice and quiet now. I've lubricated these the hubs and gives the idler some rubber renew. That's got that taken care of. Okay, now that the alignment is correct, I'm going to use a hex key just to tighten up the two lock screws to prevent them from coming loose again. There. That'll keep the guides from turning in the future. So get the head cover back in place. Yes, I did clean the heads. I just wasn't recording when I cleaned them. You guys have seen me clean heads before. I don't think I need to go down that road every time I work on a VCR. This one here is putting out a really good picture now. And we're gonna start the, the process of reassembling of this one. Well. Okay, you get this back together, get the board back on, haven't even fastened it down yet. I look, and the left meter has gone out yet again. So this is a recording I made years and years and years ago. Since a year now. And uh, we are. It's a SLP or EP. Four days before the deadline. And I'm, uh, 
quite nervous about a lot of uh, problems, technical uh, problems. Anybody does, might technical recognize him. That's uh, Gene Michelle Jar, the electronic music. Forefather of electronic music, basically. Should be a very good one. Houston Festival 86 is underway. This is KHOU-TV, Houston. Well, Houston skyline is about to be transformed into a backdrop for the biggest laser light show ever seen in America. KRIV-TV, Houston. Crews continued working downtown today, setting the stage for Saturday's spectacular show of lights, lasers, fireworks, and music. It's called Rendezvous Houston, City in Concert. Now, Channel 13, Eyewitness News. Well, it's being called everything from the show of shows to the biggest concert in history, and officially, it is known as Rendezvous Houston, a laser and light show that's going to use downtown buildings as the stage. Guess I have to stop recording now that the music has started. But yeah, that would have that would have been a big show to put on that one. I found it was interesting this documentary, and it has the concert on it too, right? Yeah. Okay. Do not look into the laser beam. Yeah. Think. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that would be a very good idea. 